Good afternoon. Welcome to the House Environment and Energy Committee. We are going to walk through H687 version 3.1 with our legislative council. Welcome, Council Tchaikovsky. Hello, Ellen Tchaikovsky. Representatives, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm the legislative, Ellen Tchaikovsky, I'm the legislative council. Yes, draft 3.1 dated today. We have a question from Representative Sidney. Yes, so uh, how are we approaching this? Are we to um, remain silent and allow this walkthrough to happen? Are we to ask questions as uh, we're going through? Um, we are Which... going to ask our council how much yellow is in this version. Um, so in the... Excuse me, I don't... I think that was the answer to my question. So I'm are we finding out more questions? information before I can answer your question. Okay. To see what, how much new language is in this version versus stuff we can revisit and ask questions on. So in the first, in the language that you have reviewed previously, there are a couple of small changes. Um, so there is minimal yellow. Some of them were purely grammatical, and then some of them are changes that sort of came out of last week's discussion. And then really starting on page 80, sorry, page page 92 through the last 40 pages of the bill is all new and it's language related to the designated areas update report. Okay. So I'm gonna suggest we start with that. Page 92. Um, and hope, you know, see how far we get. Maybe, sure. I don't know how long the floor is going to be a day. We may come back after the floor. This is 3.1. This is 3.1. <clears throat> Working my way to 92. 133 pages. Because Representative Smith was complaining <laughs> about the Lord. Too short. Yeah. <laughs> and so Amy and Leonard would have a field day with so. us. <laughs> This is more interesting. Um, orient us to what's been added, if you would please, just big picture. Sure, so I think that you have heard testimony that there, there was a report that came out from the Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, that report was requested in last year's legislation and the year prior to update the designated area program. And those are the, currently we have five designated areas. Um, that report recommended condensing those five designated areas into two with an optional add-on one. And so this language broadly does, it gets rid of the whole, the whole prior program, streamlines it down into a sort of main designation and then an add-on designation of neighborhoods. It establishes the process for how those designations happen. And then it establishes, um, the sort of benefits ladder of what comes with the designations. Um, it has some language regarding the mapping of those with the regional planning commissions. Um, and then <clears throat> sort of overall how that program will function moving forward. So, and then I will just also plug, I did do a section by section um, for today for this draft. Um, the sections on this section are kind of sparse. Um, because writing a section by section takes a long time anyway. Right, and we just added it. Yeah. Enough. Thank you for doing the section by sections on yeah. all of our whole bill. Um, that'll be really helpful for us and public. And, and so I'll, just to sort of finish broadly, what is done in these last um, 40 pages is that it repeals all of chapter 76A of Title 24, which is the designated area program. And then it takes all of those sections rewrites the first few, the second half of that chapter remains largely the same. Um, so there is some language that is existing statute in law currently, but then the first part about the actual designations has been changed. Thank you for that. And we do have Jacob Hemmerk with us, which I really appreciate so that when we get walking through it, you can help orient us and answer questions that we may have on it. So I'd like to focus on that. Um, and when we have clarifying questions, he'll be here to answer them. And so questions are well. We're well. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. So on page 92, 
As I did just mention, first thing that's happening is that Chapter 76A of Title 24 is being repealed. Um, next, uh, Section 44 is all of the new chapter I was just mentioning. So it would be Chapter 139. Um, so first is a new definition section. And then also a lot of what's happening here is changing the names of things that have already existed. So first it's changing the name of this program to the State Community Revitalization Program, which has previously been called the Historic Downtown Program or the State Designation Program. Uh, so first, the first definition, <clears throat> Community Revitalization Program means the program established under this chapter as adapted from the former designated areas program, formerly in chapter 76A of this title. Statutory references outside this chapter referring to the former state designated village centers, downtown and new town centers shall mean designated center once established. On to page 93. Statutory references outside this chapter referring to the former state designated growth centers and neighborhood development areas shall mean designated neighborhood once established. Complete streets or complete street principles has the same meaning as in 19 VSA chapter 24. Department means the Department of Housing and Community Development. Downtown or village means the traditional and historic central business district of a community that has served as the focus of socioeconomic interaction in the community, characterized by a cohesive core of commercial and mixed use buildings, some of which may contain mixed use spaces, often interspersed with civic, religious, residential and industrial buildings and public spaces, typically arranged along a main street and internet inter intersecting side streets that are within walking distance for residents who live within and surrounding the center and that are served by public infrastructure such as sidewalks and public transit. <clears throat> Downtowns are typically larger in scale than village centers and are characterized by a development pattern that is consistent with smart growth principles and that are served by complete streets. Industrial uses may be found within or immediately adjacent to these centers. <clears throat> Downtown center or village center means areas on the regional plan future land use maps, which may be designated as a center. On to page 94, <clears throat> infill means the use of vacant land or property or the redevelopment of existing buildings within a built up area for further construction or land development. Local downtown organization means either a nonprofit corporation or a board, council or commission created by the legislative body of the municipality, <clears throat> whose primary purpose is to administer and implement the community reinvestment agreement and other matters regarding the revitalization of the downtown. Planned growth area means an area of the regional plan, future land use maps, which may encompass a downtown center or a village center on the future regional future land use map and may be designated as a center or neighborhood or both. So I'm going to pause quickly and say that this language will need to be harmonized with your language, but there are quite a few choices that you'll need to make regarding that. So this language is based on the designated area report and taken largely from what's in S308, um, this the Senate bill. Um, so it, it doesn't necessarily neatly fit into your bill yet. Like, like having this definition of planned growth area. Mm. Um, so you'll need to make a decision. There's a proposal in this language about how to designate planned growth area. Mm. Um, and so I included it in case you wanna see some of that language on how it was proposed in that. But obviously you're working on a different concept, so. Um, great, thank you for that orientation. And then is it um, in any other housing bill, like in our own on the house side? Yeah. Um, so, there, so there is a standalone bill that Representative Bongard's introduced that has this line. It's very, uh, the, let's see, how did this play out? The Bongard's bill, standalone bill on designated areas, I drafted first, and I took some of that language for the Senate version, and then this 
I cleaned up some of it to put it in here, but I did leave some of the most of it intact. So you can when, but, we, we, when we don't see these clarifications or choices, you'll help us. Yeah. Um, but no other no other <clears throat> bill is moving that has that language. Um, so on page 94, line 13, regional plan future land use map means the map prepared for students 27, 24 VSA 4348 AA2. Smart growth principles means growth that maintains the historic development pattern of compact village and urban centers separated by rural countryside, develops compact mixed, mixed use centers at a scale appropriate for the community and the regional planning commission, enables choice in modes of transportation. Onto page 95, protects the state's important environmental, natural and historic features, including natural areas, water quality, scenic resources and historic sites and districts, serves to strengthen agricultural and forest industries and minimizes conflicts of development within with these industries. Balances growth with the availability of economic and efficient public utilities and services. Supports the diversity of viable businesses in downtowns and villages. Provides for housing that meets the needs of a diversity of social and income groups in each community. Reflects a settlement pattern that at full build out is not characterized by scattered development located outside compact urban and village centers that is excessively land consumptive and in inefficient. Development that limits transportation options, especially trains, bicyclists, transit users, and people with disabilities. The fragmentation of farmland and forest land. Development that it makes inefficient use of land, energy, roads, utilities, and other supporting infrastructure, or that requires the extension of infrastructure. Onto page 96. Across undeveloped lands, lands outside compact villages, downtowns, and urban centers and that contributes to a pattern of strip linear development along well-traveled roads and highways that lacks depth, uh, depth as measured from the highway. And the negative. Right, that last, that depth that last depth level, depth. yeah. This, this whole this section is in the negative, this whole definition. I, yeah. Just I. Yeah, just the last clause. Yeah. Um, Representative Logan. Uh, just a quick <clears throat> question. Um, where, where does, the definition of smart growth principles come from? So this, I, I was going to say that. Yes, yeah, so this definition exists currently in chapter 76A, and it has for an, a number of years. So it is not being changed from what currently exists. It's being moved here. And the, and the other definitions, are they new? Or are they also <laughs> getting moved? So most of the other ones are new. Um, so... I guess just taking a step back, big picture, it was very difficult for me to draft this. Um, and so this was the simplest way to draft it. It was to sort of start over and take some of the existing things. You I, you could also, instead of repealing 76A, go back and amend large chunks of it, um, which is still an option. But most of the definitions, I, ha I think probably all of the definitions are ones that, ex that are, are new to this. So community revitalization program, that's new, um, but complete streets and the department, those things have existed. Uh, downtown village and then downtown center and village, those things are being sort of updated to reflect what's happening here. Same with infill, that's, that's new. Um, and then local downtown organization uh, is an existing concept. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember off the top of my head if it was in this section or if it was in another related section. Um, yeah, land growth area is a new concept from the report situation. Uh, I don't think regional plan was defined previously, but it's using the existing concept of regional plan. It's your land use map. Yeah. Right. Um, and then smart growth is an existing definition. Uh, sprawl repair is new. Yes. Um, so yeah, so I can point that out as I keep going, but 
So on page 96 question. Yeah. <laughs> so um, do you know any of the history of how the um, the smart growth principles were defined in the first place? Might be a question for Jacob. Yeah, no, they predate me. Yeah, and I, I'm just, I don't know for certain, but I, I suspect that they were, uh, yeah, I suspect that they uh, were. You could introduce your, can you introduce yourself for oh, the record? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Jake Hemrick, Planning and Policy Manager in the Department of Housing and Community Development. I thought you were asking me to speak up. And uh, <laughs> uh, I suspected that 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 definition emerged when, uh, when the growth center concept <laughs> was put into the, uh, the chapter in the probably late 90s or late 2000s. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was added in 2006. Has the smart growth have changed in almost 20 years? All right, let's keep. <clears throat> so sprawl repair means the redevelopment of lands developed with buildings, traffic, and circulation parking and or other land coverage in pattern that is consistent with smart growth principles and it's <laughs> by a complete street connecting to approximate center and served by water and sewer infrastructure. State board means the Vermont Community Revitalization Board established in 5802. Um, there has been a state board for a long time and it's currently called the state downtown board um, so this is reflecting that the name, there is going to be a name change to that board under this new program. <clears throat> State designated downtown or village center or center means a contiguous downtown or village area designated by the environmental review board under this chapter, which may include an approved pre-existing designated village center designated downtown or designated new town center established prior to the approval of the regional future land use maps. It shall encompass an area that extends access to benefits that sustain and revitalize existing buildings and maintain the basis of the program's original focus on revitalizing historic downtowns and villages by promoting development patterns and historic preservation practices vital to Vermont's economy, cultural landscape, equity of opportunity, and climate resilience. Um, that is a new definition, though, the existing program designated downtowns and village centers. Um, on to page 97, state designated neighborhood or neighborhood means a contiguous geographic area designated by the Environmental Review Board under this chapter that is adjacent and contiguous to a designated center, which may include an approved and pre-existing designated neighborhood development area or growth center established prior to approval of the regional future land use maps. It means an area that is compact, principally walkable to a designated center, principally served by complete streets, pr primarily including historic areas and may include areas transitioning to complete streets and smart growth through municipal capital planning, programming and budgeting in complete streets in accordance with 4430 of this title. Yeah, so that is so state designated neighborhood is the new designation under this program. Under the existing designated area program, we have what's called uh, neighborhood development areas. So those are transitioning to just neighborhood or designated neighborhood, and they are contiguous to the core center, which we're I guess we're calling centers, whether it's downtown or village. Let's see. Uh, so line 12, tier one planned growth area <laughs> means a geographic area designated by the Environmental Review Board under this chapter that overlays a designated downtown and village center or designated neighborhood. It creates an area that can be applied to centers and neighborhoods in whole or in part within a regional planned growth area on the regional plan future land, land use map. 
The purpose of the designated plant growth area is to principally extend state regulatory and non-regulatory benefits, including Act 250 exemption, delegation, jurisdictional ease, presumptions of compliance, or fee reductions to recognize local conditions and capacity in areas planned for smart growth development and redevelopment. So um, the bold language there is sort of to point out that this, this is the sort of recommendation coming out of that report, or as it was at one point communicated to me, your, your underlying bill, H687, has made a different choice, but the language in here is to get tier one, you have to have a designated center. So I don't know if you're interested in sort of how or if you want to integrate those two right. things. <clears throat> Do we want tier one linked to the designated centers? So um, on page 98, Vermont downtown program means the Vermont branch of the state coordinating program of Main Street America that provides technical assistance, training, and funding incentives to downtown organizations. Um, this is something that's existing, but I don't think it previously had a specific definition. Um, on page 98, line four, village area means an area on the regional plan future land use maps, which may encompass a village center on the regional future land use map and which may be designated as a neighborhood and may not be designated as a state planned growth area due to more limited water or sewer infrastructure or the absence of municipal plans and regulations. This is a crossroads that we need to uncross. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So on page 98, the next section within this chapter is the Vermont Community Revitalization Board, which is currently called the Vermont Downtown Development Board or the Vermont Downtown or the Downtown Board or the State Board. Um, and it is an existing board. And currently in statute, uh, that is the board that issues designations for the designation program. <clears throat> so a Community Revitalization Board also referred to as the State Board, is created to administer the provisions of this chapter. The State Board shall be composed of the following members or their designees. The Secretary of Commerce and Community Development, the Secretary of Transportation, Secretary of Natural Resources, Commissioner of Public Safety, the State Historic Preservation Officer, a person appointed by the Governor from a list of three names submitted by the Vermont Natural Resources Council and Preservation Trust of Vermont, on to page 99, a person appointed by the governor from a list of three names submitted by the Association of Chamber Executives. Uh, three public uh, members, representative of local government, one of whom shall be designated by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and two of whom shall be appointed by the governor. Uh, the executive director of the Vermont Bond Bank, the state treasurer, a member of the Vermont Planners Associated designated by the association, the chair of the Environmental Review Board, a representative of a regional planning commission designated by VAPTA. All right, so I'll, let me just stop there. Um, this is the existing list of members of the board, except the direct, the executive director of the Vermont Bond Bank and the treasurer are not currently on it. So otherwise, this is the existing board. Um, and then I did, I do want to just flag the the chair of the NRB or their designee has been a member of this board for a while, um, and they are on this board as well. 
Did you just want to track how this board may interact with the new board, depending on decisions you make and if they should be? If there should be a member. Jacob, can you speak a little bit to the kind of vision for reimagining this board? Yeah, so the, the, the changes envisioned here at, a, in fact, at the two positions, treasurer, the bond bank, as well as the office of racial equity, uh, the interests there are having more, uh, uh, more appointees that uh, are investing in, are making infrastructure investments or guiding municipal infrastructure investments, as well as environmental justice considerations related to land use. Uh, the board's function would change in that uh, the board would be advising the new environmental review board on the recognition of the regional future land use maps. Um, and so they wouldn't have a direct approval authority over the designated areas and instead would be more focused on uh, advising that board, but also uh, coordinating across agencies and entities uh, to uh, for investments in designated centers. And a high level coordination recommendations to the ERB, but then not, work, not being involved in the actual designation process but more the oversight of the programs and how they get, how they can uh, complement each other, I'm guessing. Yeah, and, and continuing to confer certain benefits like making tax credit decisions. Great. Representative Logan. Thank you. Um, is, had, have you considered um, appointing someone from the um, EHCB Land Access and Opportunity Board or the Environment? <laughs> Justice Advisory Council. These are new, you know, uh, that, that are springing up now, but the Office of Racial Equity, you know, interfaces with both of those. Um, but it does seem like they might be appropriate additions to, I don't know which, <laughs> frankly, but because uh, the Environmental Justice Advisory Council is more focused on A and R, <clears throat> like DEC. Really, I don't know. Anyway, they're new, so it's hard to know what role they're supposed. The council and the land access and opportunity board are supposed to be playing relative to land use and environmental justice issues. But consideration was absolutely given to those organizations, and the thought was is that the Office of Racial Equity. Um, the, the director's uh, suggested that she would uh, likely designate that to somebody who was more interested in land use issues and that it would probably play out functionally that way. Great. Thank you. Uh, so on page 99, line 14, the state board shall elect a chair and vice chair from among its membership. The department shall provide legal, staff, and administrative support to the state board, shall produce guidelines to direct municipalities seeking to obtain designation under this chapter. And for other purposes established by this chapter and shall pay per diem compensation for board members pursuant to 30 BSA, 32 BSA 1010B. The board shall meet at least quarterly. On to page 100. <clears throat> the state board shall have authority to adopt rules of procedure to use for appeal of its decisions and rules on handling conflicts of interest. Mm -hmm. In addition to any other duties confirmed by law, the state board shall have the following <clears throat> duties to serve as the funding and benefits coordination body for the state community revitalization program to review and issue decisions on proposed region, regional plan future land use maps prepared by the Regional Planning Commission and presented to the ERB for designated center and designated neighborhood recognition under this chapter. To recommend conditioned designation approvals and modifications to the regional plan future land use maps presented for the designated areas to recommend suspension or removal of a designation approved by the ERB, 
to award tax credits under 32 VSA 5930 AA, which is the Downtown and Village Center Tax Credit Program. To manage the Downtown Transportation and Related Capital Improvement Fund Program established in 5808. We have a question. Representative Bongar. It wasn't so much of a question, it's just a note that I, I'm sure you've bolded this because it's a place that we need to pay attention and we have to make sure it meshes properly because as written, it's so, it, not, not the jumping more the way you wrote it, but it, um, it gives this board a rule that I don't think anybody's envisioning. So we need to figure out how to mesh it. Right, so currently there's a few <laughs> things happening on this page in general. So um, right now the board is primarily focused on approving designations and then awarding the incentives under those designations. Um, like I also just flagged about appeals <laughs> is in here too at the top of the page. I don't know if they currently do that actually. Um, and then I do think there's some internal inconsistency with even within this language. That's also why it's bolded. Um, Cause I guess I didn't fully realize that this board was not making the designations but the ERB under this proposal is making all of the designations. So you wrote it, I think it probably was. <laughs> <laughs> right, there's a lot of moving parts here. Um, yeah, so a lot of sort of like foundational decisions you'll need to make to get this, and then I can kind of conform the language to that. <clears throat> um, and so at the, at the bottom of page 100, uh, to have standing and regional plan approvals before the ERB and onto page 101, to review and comment on environmental review board guidelines, rules, or procedures as they may, as they relate to the designations under this chapter. So yeah, so some of this, once you just make some decisions, you, I think you may want to redraft the list of duties because it also had on the prior page um, setting up uh, guidelines for applications. And if they're not, if they are the ones making the approvals, that would make sense. But if they aren't, maybe don't want them to set the guidelines. Um, and then, yeah. <clears throat> um, so then on page 101, there, section 5803 is a completely new section, and it may be, this may be redundant to your bill, but it's about regional plan mapping and uh, specific to what's happening in this chapter. So the regional plan future land use map developed per uh, section 4348A of this title shall delineate areas within the RPC's member municipalities that are eligible to be designated as centers and neighborhoods in consultation with the municipalities. The areas eligible for designation shall be identified on the regional plan future land use map as regional downtown centers, village centers, planned growth area, and village areas in a manner consistent with this chapter. This methodology shall include all approved designated downtowns, village centers, new town centers, neighborhood development areas and growth centers existing on July 1, 2024, unless the subject member municipality requests otherwise. <clears throat> Exclusions, with the exception- so, oh. so just a note for us, this is a, something we really need to figure out because the way we're talking about 1B is that it would require sewer or water plus a couple of things and so how how this interfaces it's something we really need to think right about. And the fact that they are there now and they show up on the future land use map doesn't mean that they are eligible to be tier 1b because there's a couple of additional requirements for 1b or keeping that all straight Right. And I think so far, actually, that first paragraph doesn't necessarily conflict with anything you're doing. It may be slightly redundant, but also kind of boiled down what I think you are sort of doing in the other sections. Um, so then down on line 14, exclusions. With the exception for pre-existing non-conforming designations approved prior to the establishment of the program under this chapter, 
the areas eligible for designation on the regional plan future land use map for designation as a center shall not include leapfrog development that is disconnected from a center and that lacks a pedestrian connection to the center via a complete street or the following categories defined in regional plan future land use maps. Transition area, on to page 102. Unplanned expansions not served by infrastructure. Resource-based recreation areas. Enterprise areas not part of the regional planned growth area. And rural areas. Hamlets, general, farms, forest, conservation areas. A proposed planned growth areas for state designation may be mapped by a municipality in consultation with the Regional Planning Commission pursuant to 5806 of this title. VAPTA shall develop a standard methodology for the Regional Plan future land use maps that shall include the areas eligible for designation under this chapter, which shall integrate consistent elements in the municipal and regional plan. On or before December 31st, 2024, VAPTA shall develop standard methodology and process for the mapping of elig areas eligible for designation under this chapter in consultation with the department and the environmental review board shall integrate elements in the regional plan and plan for a municipality. The methodology and process shall recommend a streamlined procedure for minor amendments by the board to the boundaries of the approved designated areas on request by member municipalities to map eligible areas for designation under this chapter. On to page 103. Did you want to say something? Oh, oh. Yeah, thank you. Again, Jacob Everett from Department of Housing and Community Development. These are, uh, these are sections that I think can defer to the regional, uh, regional planning uh, report language uh, that, that are potentially uh, redundant or already addressed by the RPC prepared uh, sections. Any regional planning commission may issue independent comments to the panel or state board on a proposed regional plan future land use map. VAPTA shall develop a pre-adoption process by which the department and environmental review board can review the proposed regional plan future land use maps and issue findings on conformance with the chapter and chapter 117 of this title. The regional plan future land use map shall be submitted to the ERB for review and approval with the advice and consent of the department and state board on those downtown and village centers and neighborhoods areas to, de to be designated under this chapter. Uh, so, I, and I meant to bold this, but it, it, depending on, you may want to take all this out, but I, advice and consent of the department and state board. I don't totally know what that means, but some kind of consultation with them, I guess. So on page 103, the next section is 5804. So this is the designation of downtown and village centers. Uh, so designation established, a regional planning commission may apply to the ERB for designation of all centers within the regional planning commission by submitting the regional plan future land use map adopted by the region. The environmental review board shall seek the advice and consent of the department and state board on areas eligible for center designation as provided under this chapter. Does it make sense to me? I mean, if ERB is doing it, yeah. they're doing it. Am I missing something? Yeah. So again, Jacob Emmerich, Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, initially, it was thought that the designation, uh, the approval of the regional plan of future land use map would come to the uh, reform downtown board. Uh, questions were raised uh, by the RPCs that does it make, does it really make sense to have uh, two approval processes, one for the whole regional plan, including the future land use map, going to the ERB, and then another going to the separate downtown board. Um, so the, the the thinking here was that the whole thing would go to the ERB, but the downtown board would still have an advisory role 
uh, to the ERB uh, for its focus on centers and neighborhoods. That's not what it says here. Yeah. So the goal is to take this language and to extend it remains, make it advisory to the, an advisory rule. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so just to remind you, currently under Chapter 76A, there are downtowns, village centers, and new town centers. And this bill is, is starting in this section, um, condenses those three things into this centers, which are downtown and or village centers, just calling them centers. Um, and And the proposal is that the municipality doesn't necessarily have to make any separate application. It just all is all happening primarily through the regional planning process. Mm -hmm. uh, so on line 18. Seem like the towns should have to be motivating it. I guess they'll be, they'll be motivating it through the regional planning process. I guess they, We'll weigh in on it there. Yeah. Okay. And, and I guess just to say this, as we are thinking about reductions, I'm comfortable with that with 1B. I'm comfortable with that with 1A. I think 1A needs to be on the map, but then get a separate approval by the board. So, so that, that's what we have. It, so that's what we have it drafted approval here. Yeah. 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 This is separate. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't jurisdiction. This is their program. Okay. This is not about it yeah yeah okay yeah sorry yeah representative civilian yeah I, and i would just i mean noting representative bongard's comments you know i don't have a lot of comfort with a lot of this at this point so i mean i think we're just kind of flagging ideas right at this point So a pre-application meeting shall be held with the ERB and department staff to review the program requirements at least 60 days prior to submission and review of the Regional Planning Commission future land use map and adjoining Regional Planning Commission review. Onto page 104, the meeting shall be held in the Regional Planning Commission unless the Regional Planning Commission agrees to another location. An application by a regional planning commission shall contain the regional plan future land use map that delineates all centers eligible for designation within the municipalities throughout the regional planning commission. The regional plan future land use map shall identify downtown centers and village centers as the downtown and village areas eligible for designation as centers. The application shall also include evidence that the municipalities have been notified of the Regional Planning Commission's intent to apply, evidence that the notice of its application has been submitted, uh, so has been published on the Regional Planning Commission's website, and information showing that the eligible regional land use areas that the standards for designation, sorry, information showing that the eligible regional land use areas that the standard for designation established in this chapter well, that's not a complete sentence. Something is happening there about information. Um, in information. There needs to be information in the application. Uh, inclusions. Um, the areas designated by the Regional Planning Commissions as a center shall allow for the designation of pre-existing approved village centers, downtown centers, and new town centers in existence on or before December 25th, 2025. Approval. The ERB shall hold a hearing to approve a regional plan future land use map within 90 days following the receipt of a complete application and forward the application to the department within 15 days. The state board shall hold a hearing on the complete application onto page 105 to review the regional plan future land use map within 60 days following the receipt of a complete application. The state board shall issue a written decision that the regional plan future land use map has met the requirements of at least one step 
on the benefits ladder described in subsection E of this section and forward its decision to the ERB. The ERB shall issue written, shall issue specific written findings of its decision. Oh, if its decision does not accept the state board's determination for community revitalization boundaries. So I think as you work through this, you might wanna just keep an eye on the timeline that's being established here. Um, uh, transition, all designated village centers, new town centers or downtowns existing as of July 1, 2024, will retain current benefits until July 1, 2029 or until approval of future of regional future land use maps by the state board, whichever comes first. All existing designations in effect July 1, 2024 will expire July 1, 2029 if the Regional Planning Commission does not receive state board approval of the regional plan future land use maps under this chapter. All benefits for pre-existing designated centers, uh, village centers, downtowns and new town centers that are removed under this chapter shall remain with the prior designations existing as of July 1, 2024 until July 1, 2032. During the period of transition, no renewal shall be required for the pre-existing designations. New applications may be approved by the State Board prior to approval of this regional future land use maps under former Chapter 76A of this title by the State Board until July 1, 2025. So, as you work on this program, shifting from an existing state program to a new state program does require a transition period. Um, it is very, it is not advisable to dra draft contingent statutes. So I have in, I had recommended specific dates here so that there were sort of drop dead dates. Um, you may want to consider if those are the correct dates, but saying something will exist until someone else decides it doesn't is not how the laws should be drafted. So I just want to flag that, um, that these might not be the dates you think will work for this, but you should have dates in mind for how that transition will happen. Why do we, um, what was the rationale for on line 13, the July 1, 29 date, and then down at 17, July 1, 32? I don't remember what the sense. 2032 date is. So would, it, would it make sense for that to be 29 as well? There's something about if if they don't get the new designation, there has to also be a drop dead date. But my only question was, should they be the same both both July 1, 29? Yeah, but if I could provide, provide additional context there. So the uh, the 2032 date relates to um, uh, lost uh, or uh, relates to regulatory benefits that are removed under the, the chapter. And the thinking there was that there might need to be additional time to get the plan growth or tier one or tier, tier 1A or tier 1B uh, in the eight year plan cycle. Um, and so it's related specifically to that Act 250 exemption and providing a little bit more time to make that transition for those benefits. Representative Lemon. Thank you, Chair. Um, in line 20, <clears throat> is that normal to refer to a repealed section of yeah. So drafting all of this is sort of tricky yeah. and I think it can be cleaned up. So there isn't a, I think, I, I think it needs work on, I do with how you, when exactly 76A is repealed, mm -hmm. especially if you're giving them another year to apply under it. So there should probably be a delay. Um, uh, I, I'd love so like so. Anyways, structuring this legal has been a little bit of a, a interesting thought experiment. 
because I haven't figured it out fully yet. So happy to hear thoughts on how to structure this transition. Well, it's interesting because in the very beginning, I thought, well, I, I'm very curious why we're striking that section. And I thought that would be a digression, but maybe it's not. What was behind the thinking of repealing a section rather than just editing it? Um, because there's significant overlap with the old, with the existing program, but you're streamlining parts. So you're shedding large parts of it. So how to sh hmm. structure. There would have been a lot of strike through, like we're getting rid of this. Yes. And so it, honestly, it was just easier for me to write it from scratch. But I, ooh. yes, so I, we, I could potentially, but if you're, yes, it, we could, I, I, but I would need to think about, I haven't done one of these before where we like rebuild a program from, from the beginning, top up. So, uh, yeah, I'm open to suggestions on how to legally structure it. We're doing a lot here in this bill, and I um, kind of keep going back to does this, th this is not as time sensitive as some of the other elements that we're trying to get going. Um, I'm not, uh, yeah, I want to make sure we get it right and not complete too many things. See what else is in here. Uh, so on to page 106. <clears throat> okay, the benefit <clears throat> steps. So, so a center may receive the benefits associated with the steps in this chapter by meeting the established requirements. The department shall review applications from municipalities to advance from step one to step two and from step two to step three, and issue written decisions. If a municipal application is, re is rejected by the department, uh, the municipality may appeal to the, the administration to the, the administrative decision to the state board. Applications to the department will be reviewed and approved by staff within 30 days following receipt of a complete application. <clears throat> Appeals will be heard by the state board within 30 days following an appeal. The department may issue guidelines to administer these steps. Question, question Jacob. Um, how often do people appeal this? How often is this controversial? Appeal designation? Probably there's no appeal. Uh, there's no ability to appeal. The state board decision is fine. Has that been controversial? <clears throat> I think there have been times uh, where in poor decisions questions, but generally not. Yeah, and so this is a setting up a sort of different process because it's one designation, but with increasing requirements get you increasing benefits. So step one, requirements. Step one is established to create an accessible and low barrier entry point for all villages throughout the state to access site-based improvement supports and conduct initial planning. A municipality with an approved designated village center as of July 1, 2024, shall automatically reach state one, uh, step one upon approval of the regional plan future land use map by the environmental review. Regional plan future land use maps supersede pre-existing designated areas that may already meet step one requirement. Benefits. A center that reaches step one is eligible for the following benefits. On to 107. Funding and technical assistance for site-based projects, including the Better Places grant program, access to the Downtown and Village Center tax credit program described in 32 VSA 5930 AA, and other programs identified in, in the department's guidelines, and funding for developing or amending the municipal plan, visioning, and assessments. Step two, requirements. Step two is established to create mid-level entry point for emerging villages throughout the state to build planning and implementation capacity for community scale projects. A center reaches step two if it, 
meets the requirements of step one, or if it has an approved village center or new town center as of July 1, 2024, has, confirmed, has a confirmed municipal planning process, and has a municipal plan with goals for, for investment in the center. Benefits. In addition to the benefits of step one, a center that reaches step two is eligible for the following benefits. General grant priority for, for bylaws and special purpose plans, area improvement or reinvestment plans, including the Better Connections Program, and other applicable programs identified by department guidance, and for capital plans. On to page 108, funding for infrastructure project scoping, design, engineering, including participation in the Downtown Transportation and Related Capital Improvement Fund Program, established by Section 5808 of the title. The authority to create a special taxing district pursuant to Chapter 87 of this title, for the purposes of financing both capital and operating costs of a project within the boundaries of a center. Priority consideration for state and federal affordable housing funding. Authority for the municipal legislative body to lower speed limits less than five, uh, 25 miles per hour within the center under tw 23 VSA. When everyone really wants. <laughs> it is a, a, a <laughs> exciting opportunity. <laughs> yeah, it is. Road rage creator. It is. How much does the money do here? Yeah. I'm getting my transportation. <laughs> getting road rage just thinking about it. An exemption from the land gains tax. Exemption from the land gains tax? Is that existing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Step three. Yeah. Step three is established to create the high the higher level entry point for downtowns throughout the state to create vibrant mixed use centers. A center reaches step three and achieves status as a downtown. If the department finds that it meets the following requirements, meets the requirements of step two, or if it has an existing designated downtown in effect as of July 1, 2024, onto page 109, is listed or eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places has a downtown improvement plan, has a downtown investment agreement, has a capital plan that implements the downtown improvement plan, has a local downtown organization with an organizational structure necessary to sustain a comprehensive long-term downtown revitalization effort, including a local downtown organization that will collaborate with municipal departments, departments, <clears throat> local businesses, and local nonprofit organizations. The local downtown organization shall work to Enhance the physical appearance and livability of the downtown district by implementing local policies that promote the use and rehabilitation of historic and existing buildings, by developing pedestrian-oriented design requirements, by encouraging new development and infill that satisfy such design requirements, and by supporting long-term planning that is consistent with the goals set forth in 4302 of this title. Build consensus and cooperation among the many groups and individuals that who have a role in the planning, development, and revitalization process. On to page 110. Market the assets of the downtown district to customers, potential investments, new businesses, local citizens, and visitors. Strengthen, diversify, and increase the economic activity within the downtown district. And measure annual progress and achievements of the revitalization effort as required by department guidelines. Uh, the downtown shall have has available water and wastewater service and capacity, has permanent zoning and subdivision bylaws, has adopted historic preservation regulations for the district with a demonstrate with a demonstrated commitment to protect and enhance the district character of the downtown through the adoption of bylaws that adequately meet the historic preservation requirements in subdivision 44141 E and F of this title unless recognized by the program as a pre-existing designated new town center. I guess along the way here, uh, how much of this is new versus pre-existing? Do you want Jacob to speak to that or do you want to speak to that, Ella? Sure, go ahead. I believe all of it is pre-existing, but there are some minor modifications to uh, 
design and farm based sections and the historical preservation sections in recognition that uh, new town centers would be moving into this framework and would not have historic areas and so would need some give for design bylaws. But the big picture, the centers are recognized on the regional future land use maps from the smallest smallest little village to the largest downtown. And then uh, and then they're sorted into steps. So that way the smallest little village uh, could, if, and maybe the select board just wants to fix up an old general store, they they can do that with as low fr lowest friction as possible in step one. Um, and then there's an administrative process where staff at, at DACD uh, would look at the uh, requirements uh, from a municipality and it recognized them as a larger village or a downtown and they unlock those benefits uh, similar to what we do now but which with a lot less administrative process um so on page 110 line 15 has adopted design or form-based regulations that adequately regulate the physical form and scale of development <clears throat> Adequately. <laughs> Downtown board decides what adequately is, or the ERB has to, or. Actually, I think it's the department in this case. Uh, benefits. In addition to the benefits of steps one and two, a municipality that reaches step three is eligible for the following benefits. Funding for the local downtown organization and technical assistance from the Vermont Downtown Program for the center. On to page 111, tax increment financing location pursuant to 32 BSA 5404A. A reallocation of receipts related to the tax imposed on sales of construction materials as provided in 32 BSA 9819. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, Jacob, I think that's an yeah. existing. Yeah, it's an existing program whereby sales tax reallocations could support uh, particular regional projects. So, any construction material that's sold where in the town in the? I don't know. I'd like to know more. What, what that is and what it does, please. Um, so then this next language is also existing about uh, sprinklers. A rebate on the cost of a qualified sprinkler system in an amount not to exceed $2,000 for building owners or lessees. Rebate shall be paid by the Department of Public Safety. To be qualified, a sprinkler system must be a complete automatic fire sprinkler system installed in accord with the Department of Public Safety's rules in an older or historic building that is certified for a state tax credit under 32 VSA 5930CC A or B and is located in a center. A total of not more than $40,000 of rebate shall be granted in any calendar year by the Department of Public Safety. If in any year applications for rebates exceed that amount, the Department of Public Safety shall grant rebates for qualified systems in accordance with the, to the date the building was certified for tax credit under 5930CC A or B with the earlier date receiving priority. E, A or B. So that's pre existing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, signage options under 10 VSA 494.13 and 17, certain appeal limitations pursuant to chapter 117, highest priority for local, for locating proposed state functions by the commissioner of buildings and general services or other state officials in consultation with the municipality, department, state board, the general assembly, committees of jurisdiction for the capital budget until page 112, the host regional planning commission. When a downtown location is not suitable, the commission shall issue written findings to the consulted parties demonstrating how suitability of the state function to a downtown location is not feasible. <clears throat> that is an existing provision that downtowns get priority in siting of state buildings. <clears throat> um, until th 2032, regulatory benefits under 
uh, 10 VSA Chapter 151, which is, which is Act 250. Appeal, a decision of the ERB on regional plan future land use map approval for designation. Excuse me, that's the, is that extending the, what is that doing? So there are existing benefits under Act 250. Um, I can think of a couple off the top of my head, though I don't necessarily know fully what's intended here. So like, for example, um, Well, so right now, NDAs get 50% discount on application fees, but that wouldn't be applicable here necessarily. But, okay. Um, maybe also downtown findings. Downtown findings. Uh, what, a down, what does that mean, downtown findings? So there's an existing process under Act 250 where a, this the town can apply for uh, or any any project located within a downtown can apply for findings of fact, which is a simplified application process essentially for projects within downtowns. Um, you also did recently create master plans for downtowns if towns want to apply for them. Uh, for findings downtown. Right. Yeah. No, but are there are there other benefits for downtowns right now under Act 250? Or there's a fifty percent fee reduction in downtowns already right now for NDAs. NDAs. Yeah. yeah. And downtown findings don't have. Yeah. Representative Bongar. Um, this is, I think, for. Jake, um, when we talk about the purpose of this section, we're going to myself away up here again. Um, the purpose of this being to create vibrant downtowns, um, especially tier, tier three, I'm thinking about. Why, why, step three, sorry. Yes, step three. <laughs> um, why is it necessary to be listed um, on the National Register of Historic Places because that will leave some out that aren't or can't be. And if we're trying to create, use this for vibrancy, why is that there? Yeah, I think I think that's a legitimate question. The program has historically been rooted in historic places. That's, that's existing statute. And what it does is anchors the program in, uh, in our historic centers and advances the planning goals and, Compact settlements surrounded by uh, uh, <clears throat> historic compact settlements surrounded by farm forest open space. So, so by removing that, he would be opening up uh, potentially, depending upon how the regional future land use categories are framed, designation to non-historic places. So that's a policy question for us to because uh, I found what I was looking for. Wouldn't would we say that we? Step three is established to create the higher level entry point for downtown strategies to create vibrant uh, use centers. So the roots of so I would think you could be a yeah you could be a, a vibrant mixed use center without being a historic district. So just want to okay just flag it. Okay. okay, one more paragraph and then we're gonna take a break. Uh, appeal, a decision of the ERB on regional plan future land use map approval for designations under this section may be appealed to the Environmental Division of the Superior Court within 15 days following the issuance of the written decision. Uh, do you just want to flag this is new about appeals? Hmm. But it is tied to the map. So I, I don't I don't know if you have actually discussed that at all in regards to your how how much you have discussed appeals and how that will work for uh, regional land maps. Okay. All right, let's take five minutes. We're gonna reconvene. 
our meeting and continue walking through draft 3.1 of H687. <clears throat> All right, so on page 112, line 11. So now this is to the designated neighborhoods. And um, so you will recall that currently under the program, there are neighborhood development areas, NDAs. So this is the replacement for that. A regional planning commission may apply to the environmental review board for designation of residential areas on the regional plan future land use maps within the regional planning commission, within that regional planning commission as a designated neighborhood. Areas eligible for designation include planned growth area and village areas identified on the regional plan future land use map. This designation requires uh, recognizes that continued reinvestment is needed to maintain the vitality of downtowns and villages and their adjacent neighborhoods, and that the benefit structure must ensure that any subsidy for sprawl repair or infill development locations within a within a neighborhood is secondary to a primary commitment to maintain the livability and maximize the climate resilience and flood safe infill potential of these areas. So on page 113, an application for a designated neighborhood shall supplement the original application for the associated designation and follow the same application process. So just like with the existing NDA, you have to have a center um, designated and then this is a supplemental designation. An application by a regional planning commission shall contain the regional plan future land use map that accurately delineates the planned growth area and plant and village areas as the areas eligible for designation as neighborhoods. The application shall also include evidence that the municipalities have been notified of the regional planning commission's intent to apply evidence that notice of its application has been published on the commission's website and information showing that, that the district meets the standards for designation established in subdivision subsection D of this section. Exclusions. <laughs> the areas eligible for designation as a neighborhood shall not include the excluded regional areas identified on the regional plan future land use map and flood hazard and fluvial erosion areas, except those areas contain <laughs> increasing development in areas suitable for infill development as defined in section 29 of two, uh, 201 of the Vermont Flood Hazard Area and River Corridor Rule as determined by ANR. Approval. The Environmental Review Board shall hold a hearing to approve a regional plan future land use map within 90 days following the receipt of the complete application and forward the application to the department within 15 days. The state board shall hold uh, onto page 114. The state board shall hold a hearing on the complete application to review the regional plan future land use map within 60 days following the receipt of a complete application. The state board shall issue a written decision that the regional future land use map has met the requirements described in subsection D of the section and forward its decision to the environmental review board. So I'm a little lost. So the name. First of all, what is a designated neighborhood? How does it fit into the step one, two, three? It doesn't. Okay, so what is it? It's the adjacent residential neighborhoods to the center. And that still exists for what reason? What does it do? And you don't have to answer that. Jacob can answer it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. for yes. benefits similar to but growth centers and neighborhood development areas already get. So supports for housing funding, uh, supports for uh, municipal planning, uh, all the, the benefits that are listed in this, this section. Where are the benefits listed? For the benefits, we haven't gotten there. Yeah. Okay. And, the, but they're still, I mean, they're not, they're not related to uh, like, Tier one A, or how are they related? Well, to be determined, but I, th I think that uh, they would be potentially eligible for a tier one A or tier one B classifications because the neighborhood designation is still derived from the regional land use maps. Um, so the neighborhoods 
could include what the regions would be mapping as planned growth areas. Okay, okay so they could be part of a planned growth area, but they're <laughs> still, they still have separate benefits through, through ACCD. Okay, and then why is there this approval process really? Am I lost in the bill? Like designated neighborhood areas, we're in 5805, and then there's a separate approval process? Why? It needs to go, right? Like, okay, we we need to, this is, am I right? I, I don't know. So current, so I, I, I still haven't fully digested this, honestly, but currently, if you remember what we have in the existing program is the, the three core designations, and then there are the two overlay designations that are sort of around them and include them. And so the, the growth areas and the neighborhood development areas. And so those are overlay districts to downtowns, village centers, new town centers. And so it's a similar concept here where you have your core and then this is the residential area around it. But you are raising an interesting question of should those, shouldn't those designations happen at the same time? Yes. But it does, I guess, depend on what you want the requirements to be for the neighborhood. Thank you. Um, so on page 114, uh, I think we're on line four. <laughs> That's not good. The state board shall issue a written decision that the regional future land use map has met the requirements described in subsection D and forward its decisions to the Environmental Review Board. The ERB shall issue specific written findings if its decision does not accept the state board's determination for community revitalization boundaries. So do we already... Do we already have an approval section even in this section? No, there's I, the language is very similar to the de, the center designation. So it is similar language to a, to the process. For so we have had another. So, so you have them all separate as if the ERB is going to be approving these all separately at all across. OK. Yes. I can't have been that. And we want to work it down to what you're thinking. Yeah, because uh, if this that's is the case, this will be all the ERB yeah. does. I mean, yeah. That's definitely not yeah. our vision for that board. Yeah. Okay. Um, transition. Any municipality with an existing growth center or neighborhood development area will retain current benefits until July 1, 2029, or upon approval of the regional plan future land use maps, whichever comes first. All existing neighborhood development area and growth center designations in effect July 1, 2024 will expire July 1, 2029 if the Regional Planning Commission does not gain approval. All benefits that are removed from neighborhood development areas and growth centers under this chapter shall remain active with prior designations <coughs> existing as of July 1, 2024 until July 1, 2032. Same dichotomous that mm -hmm. we're going to have to get a handle on. During the period of transition, no renewals shall be required for existing designations prior to the approval of a regional plan, future land use map by the state board. Only de neighborhood development area designations may be approved by the state board. On to page 115. Okay. Um, so now that I'm reading the timeline um, for the second time, um, uh, Jake. Can I clarify, what do you mean by the eight-year planning period? So a municipal oh. regional plan is valid for an eight, eight-year period. And so if a uh, law were to start in 2024, that would provide an eight-year period to update the municipal plan and then pursue um, at following recognition of regional map the uh, tier one, 1A or tier 1B, 250 benefits. So there will be no municipal plans that will be approved after July 1, 2024 that won't include the new designation that will be using the old designation categories. I'm just wondering if 2032 is far enough out is basically the root of my question. Yeah, you know what I think we would 
what probably what needs to happen here is to do a visual with the timelines uh, once the dates get uh, uh, converge. Because uh, certainly the, I, I think you received testimony from the regional planning commissions. They're looking at a much more advanced timeline mm -hmm. than what's here and they all are going to need to point in the same direction. Yep, that would be true. Okay. Uh, so on to page 115, requirements. A designated neighborhood shall meet the following requirements. Has an existing growth centers and neighborhood devel development areas as in effect July 1, 2024, or is an area located within a regional planned growth area or regional village area on a regional plan future land use map. Not sure what that's called. Has an existing growth center? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So the there's, there's typos in this sentence, right? Those are, should be singular. So they should either have an existing designated center or be mapped on the regional plan map. Uh, is anchored by a conti contiguous center designated under this chapter unless recognized by the program as a pre-existing designated neighborhood development area or a growth area or otherwise separated by a river corridor or flood hazard area as a confirmed municipal planning process has implemented the complete streets pro principles or has a capital plan under 4430 of this title to implement complete streets principles and has adopted permanent zoning and subdivision bylaws that adequately allow housing. Benefits. A designated neighborhood is eligible for the following benefits. General grant priority for bylaws and special purpose plans, area improvement or reinvestment plans, including the Better Connections Program and other programs identified in department guidance and for capital plans. On to page 116. Funding for infrastructure project scoping, design, engineering, including participation in the downtown transportation and related capital improvement fund program established by 5808. Access to the downtown and village center tax credit program. Priority consideration for state and federal affordable housing funding. Priority for funding for neighborhood infrastructure. Authority for the municipal legislative body to lower speed limits to 20 miles per hour. In the neighborhood. It's getting better all the time. <laughs> application fee limit for state wastewater application and exclusion from land gains tax uh, provided uh, in 32 BSA. So a lot of these benefits are the same as the downtown benefits. Similar. Similar. Well, and it's the same. Yeah. Oh, as what is currently part of the NDA benefit program. Yeah. Yep. Any new ones in there that we should be aware of? So I don't know what priority consideration for state and federal affordable housing funding is. It's an existing benefit Neither do I. By, uh, Vermont Housing Conservation Board, Vermont Housing Finance Agency, the Community Development Program and the Department of Housing Community Development all uh, incentivize uh, affordable housing funding within designated areas. And, and just as an additional background, the, the, this version that uh, uh, was posted today, I believe this tracks very closely to S-308, uh, which was language uh, the Senator Brace uh, bill on Act 250, future land use and designation. It's about four weeks old, and in that version, it just it bridged, I think, uh, some language uh, that the regents have prepared, some language maybe from 687 and language uh, that uh, the department um, had advised on for designations. But So I think as you're going through this, um, there, there are definitely opportunities to think about the content in the designation section here and moving that into an Act 250 lane or a future regional land use lane and then the designation lane so that they're all discrete. Because um, otherwise right now, it's a, I think these concepts are a bit, a bit uh, overlapping. I think we're going to look for opportunities to streamline our language given that. So thank you for uh, assuring us of that. 
So yeah, great. And so this whole next section, essentially, we have a process already in our bill. So this is what maybe you said we could not walk through. Well, I didn't know if you wanted to, to go through this language. Um, is, it, yeah. Um, I mean, are there, may help to have someone read it first. I mean, is this what you meant though? You just said- No, I was talking about the later sections because there's also the language in here on the Met Places Program and the Downtown Transportation Fund which are existing programs that exist. It just got moved. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, let's walk through this section and just okay. see if there's anything that we could benefit from. Do, do, do we need to walk through the designation of a plan? Because we're, we're doing that. Well, there may be something that we well, that pick makes up. makes sense to pick up. Okay. So a designation is at the bottom of page 115, 116, designation established. A municipality by its legislative body may apply to the Environmental Review Board for designation of an area within that municipality as a state designated tier one planned growth area as an overlay to a designated center or neighborhood that can be implied in whole or in part to a center or neighborhood. The purposes of the designated planned growth area is to principally extend state regulatory benefits, including Act 250 exemption, delegation, jurisdictional ease, presumption of compliance, or fee waivers from the requirements of Act 250 through the recognition of local conditions and capacity in areas planned for smart growth development and redevelopment to recognize the municipal implementation of best practices supported by the center and neighborhood benefits that support the designation of planned growth areas capable of supporting major development and redevelopment. The municipal plan shall include the intention to apply for the designation of the planned growth area under the section, and the plan shall explain how the designation would further the municipality's goals and the goals of 4302. Pre-application meeting shall be held with the Environmental Review Board staff to review the program requirements and to preliminarily identify possible designation boundaries. The meeting shall be held in the municipality unless another location is agreed to by the municipality. An application by a municipality shall contain a map that accurately delineates the proposed designated planned growth area and is consistent onto page 118 with the eligible areas on the regional planning map for the municipality. The application shall also include evidence that the Regional Planning Commission has been notified of the municipality's intent to apply, evidence that the RPC, through action of its board, supports the boundaries of the area, evidence that the municipality has published notice of its application in a local newspaper of general circulation within the municipality, and information showing that the district meets the standards for designation under subsection B of this section. Approval. The ERB shall hold a hearing on the complete application to review the regional plan future land use map within 60 days following the receipt of a complete application. The ERB shall designate a planned growth area if the ERB finds in its written decision that the municipality has met the requirements of subsection C. Requirements. A municipality shall receive designation as a designated planned growth area and its associated type of benefits if it meets the following requirements. Land development regulations, including addressing criterion 9L, smart growth principles, and elements in the existing neighborhood development area de designation. On to page 119. Advanced Development Review Administration as allowed under Environmental Re Review Board rules. Enhanced Energy Plan and Housing Mitigation Plan to advance the state's energy plan and climate action plan goals. Advance capital planning that supports the smart growth principles, complete streets and climate action. Maps of water, sewer and stormwater infrastructure and an ordinance on connections to public systems. And an improvement, an area imp improvement plan and capital investments for settlement expansion, infield development or sprawl repair. Benefits. A municipality may receive the following benefits for designation of a planned growth area. Exemption from Act 250 and tax increment financing location. Appeal. A decision of the ERB on designation of this section may be appealed to the Environmental Division of the Superior Court within 15 days following the <clears throat> decision. 
um, is the tax increment of financing where can you remind me where we're at with that? We we're still parsing those out pretty carefully, right? Or did we? Yeah. So that's that's a big chain. I actually don't know much about that statute and how it works. Jacob, can you tell us kind of where we're at with that? Yeah, this would be a pretty uh, a significant expansion to the for tax increment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, all right, so transition on or before July 1, 2029, the Regional Planning Commission shall update the Regional Plan Future Land Use Maps to delineate downtown centers, onto page 120, village centers, planned growth areas, which may encompass a downtown center and village area, village center and village areas. Until, when, until July 1, 2029, any municipality with an existing designated downtown, village center, or new town center <clears throat> may be granted a center designation by the state downtown and village board through the regional, through approval of the regional plan future land use map. Until July 1, 2029, any municipality with an existing designated neighborhood, designated neighborhood development area or growth center may be granted a designated neighborhood by the state downtown and village board through the approval of the regional plan future land use map. Again, the date that date comes from what logic? So I initially picked a date because the I think the report said uh, five years from enactment. First report, the designations report. Okay. Yeah. Um, so presuming that this bill passed on July 1, 2024, but that doesn't necessarily mesh potentially with what you're doing. Um, designation data center. The department shall maintain an online municipal planning data center, publishing approved regional plan future land use maps and indicating the status of each approved designation and within the Regional Planning Commission and associated steps or centers. Munis so that's new. Uh, and then municipal technical assistance is also new. Uh, the, the Commissioner of Housing and Community Development shall develop a procedure for providing interagency technical assistance to municipalities participating in the programs under this chapter. The procedure shall include interagency assistance and address the following. On to page 121, general project advising and scoping services, physical improvement design services, regulatory and policymaking project, ser project services, programmatic and pro project management services, and legislative recommendations to the General Assembly to better align designation benefits with strategic priorities on or before December 15, 2026. Procedures and recommendations shall address statutory state agency plans with a focus on the following strategic priorities for municipal and community development assistance. Housing development growth and equity, climate resilience, coordinated infrastructure investment, local administration, administrative capacity, equity, diversity and access, livability and social service and historic preservation. I don't understand this. What is happening here? <laughs> Representative, um, I want to hear. Actually, I just want to hear what's happening. So, I think the see. department can speak more on this. But this, there is an interest broadly that the this designated area program have greater technical assistance for municipalities, and so really this is just directing DHCD to come up with a guide on this, addressing some of these things why is it sort of repeated or like why are there let's see the difference between the list under b and the list under c for procedures help me out yeah, so the list under C, those are these are strategic areas of priority that the outreach, the designation 2050 outreach uh, 
indicated our, our key priorities for everybody involved. So the focus on housing, climate resilience, uh, and local administrative capacity, whereas the uh, list under B is more the how. How can we uh, how can we better support municipalities across state agencies uh, through this designation program with the state board uh, to show uh, measurable impacts on those areas? Thank you, Representative Logan, then Clifford. Thanks. Yeah, I think in line 20, maybe it's confusing. This section is a bit confusing because it says address the following which seems like, okay, these are the issues we're going to address. And then C seems like, okay, these are what we're, these are the issues we're going to address. <laughs> um, because they both say address. Procedures. And they both say procedures and address. Yeah, so I think the procedures, it seems to me like what is being, what the attempt is to say, these are the different types of procedures that are going to be developed, the five different types of procedures that are gonna be developed. And they're going to be developed so as to make recommendations on everything in C. Is that a correct interpretation? And all this language is new. Is that also okay? I think maybe it's just the wording in line twenty got me <laughs> clearly. The real wording is confusing. Thank you for helping to clarify, Representative Clifford. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jacob, if I may. How much more uh, with this language, how much more say of a burden would this be on your department as far as staffing goes? So I, I think to well, we can, what this is starts more to burst to make recommendations. So that's not that's not burdensome. The recommendations that would have potentially come with uh staffing and fiscal impacts. And that'd be under the um the direction of the commissioner of the Department of Housing Community Development. <laughs> so this is also just to be clear representative clifford from the department this language this idea i was curious thank you so um 58 10 11 and 12 are existing programs that exist and are not being changed they're being deleted because of the way it's been written. And so then we would need to um, understand them and be able to answer questions about them. Great. <laughs> well, it's, in terms of walkthrough, I didn't know if you wanted to. I think we're going to not walk through them right now, but I do think that we will need to understand them. And so, if yeah. Um, and then, so jumping ahead, uh, using our handy dandy outline. So section 45 and 46 amend the downtown and village center tax credit program to reference the new designated areas. So it switches out downtown village center, neighborhood development area for center or neighborhood. That's on page 127 and 128. Um, and then there are some, there's some new language at the bottom of page 128 on qualified flood mitigation project, uh, which is part of the flood mitigation tax credit that's in this section. So a qualified flood mitigation project means any combination of structural and non-structural changes to a building located within a designated downtown designated village center or neighborhood development area that reduces or eliminates flood damage to a building or its content. On to page 129. This may include, but is not limited to, the relocation of HVAC, electrical, plumbing, or other building systems, and equipment from equipment above the flood level, repairs or reinforcement in of foundation walls, <laughs> gates, or elevation of an entire eligible building above the flood level, Further eligible projects may be defined by via program guidance. The project shall comply with the municipality's adopted flood hazard bylaw if applicable, and a certificate of completion shall be submitted by a registered engineer, architect, qualified contractor, or qualified local official to program staff. So that's a change expanding what is available to uh, for the tax credit. 
And then on the next page, it's increasing the amount that can um, be awarded under the tax credit. Oh, sorry, that's on page 30, 131. So section 47 is increasing the amount of eligible tax credits. First for code improvement tax credits, uh, currently it's a maximum credit of $50,000. This increases it to $100,000. And then for the flood mitigation tax credit, <clears throat> increasing it from $75,000 to $100,000. And then finally, um, it's raising the cap on the overall program from $3 million annually in tax credits to $5 million annually in tax credits. Outside our arrogant jurisdiction, duly noted. Thank you so much, Ellen, for walking us through that. We are adjourned for the afternoon. Thank you. <clears throat>